Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishwash. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry, the Mystery of Molecules. Today's topic of discussion is Selene, SiH4. So we shall mainly discuss about the preparation and properties or I will specify this is the inorganic chemistry part of this Selene with one MCQ. And we shall, I shall explain about the silicon solar cells and contribution of Selene in silicon solar cell preparation. So a lot of chemistry to be learned in this video, but before going to details, the MCQ, the question is in front of you, which one is the hardest compound mentioned below for options I provided. I know it's a very easy question student, I expect all of you should attempt. So this is, I request you student right now, please pause the video, try by yourself and whatever answer you get, please write in the comment box with few words explaining your answer. And don't worry, at the end of the discussion, we'll get the right answer. Now, let's come back to our main topic that is Selen. So, what Selen actually is? Selen refers to many binary silicon hydrogen compounds. Generally, not only silicon hydrogen compounds, some other examples also possible like trichlorosilene, uh, this SiCH3 tetramethyl selen, SiCH4, this one tetramethyl selen, and tetraethyl ortho selen. Now, actually, in this case, you can see the valency of silicon is 4. So, four substituents on this silicon including the organosilicon compound. So, fine. And in this case, student, I guess you know this tetramethyl silen is act as enamer standard. Means it is considered that the peak position of this compound is zero and based on that the position of other compounds are marked. Point number one. And if you look at this silic tetraethyl silen, this is a very important as well as interesting compound for the preparation of silica nanoparticles. Okay, the silica nanoparticles prepared generally in nature we say many silica particles, but they are not nano; they are bulk particles. And when we consider about nanoparticles, some unique property could be obtained. For example, surface structure, porosity chemical reactivity etc etc we shall discuss in some other lecture about this silicon nanoparticles so right now today's topic of discussion is silen and by the way this silen molecule is actually a gas okay now let's discuss about the bonding and chemical reactivity first i request you student please look at the electronegativity value in case of silicon the electronegativity is 1.9 whereas in case of hydrogen the electronegativity is 2.2 so from this clear difference of electronegativity we can conclude about the polarity of carbon sorry silicon hydrogen bond and obviously this hydrogen is delta negative and silicon is having delta positive and that is the reason we can see that from here you can conclude that this is nothing but a hydride character so this is actually it can behave as silicon hydride so that's why these silens are capable to provide hydride means h minus like you i guess you have seen like sodium borohydride those things so that's why they are called reducing agent this silen can act as a reducing agent and if you look at this carbon silicon bond this is also very interesting the polarity difference is the carbon is more electronegative compared to sorry carbon is more electronegative compared to the silicon 2.5 so you can consider that this carbon is delta negative and silicon is delta positive so this is an another polarity thing student please remember in advanced time it may be required okay so now let's discuss about its synthesis how silens are prepared actually silens could be prepared from magnesium silicide means you may consider this carbide analog because both carbon and silicon belongs to the same group group now so this is magnesium silicide and in this case the oxidation state of silen is minus 4 okay so if it reacts with hcl ultimately it produces magnesium chloride as a salt and this silen gas okay so this is i shall explain about this magnesium silicide after some time because it's interesting second method of preparation is from silicon and hcl so pure silicon react with hcl and first it produce hsicl3 and hydrogen gas and later on this hsicl3 breaks down and produces silen and silicon tetrachloride so this is another method of preparation now what is the third method student this reaction is a little weak but i request you please focus on this part and if possible please remember it why i am saying 
because silicon in this case reacts with hydrogen and silicon tetrachloride and produce this HSiCl3 and this finally through multiple stages like this reaction it ultimately convert into SiH4 or silane and interesting part is that the high purity and these high purity makes this process very much important because for solar cell application we need elemental silicon and these elemental silicon need to be very pure I shall come after some time and for that purpose this method is very important. Now other methods for example from SiF4 if this SiF4 the reacted with sodium hydride it produces this silane and sodium salt. Now a question may come in your mind that sir previously in many lectures you told that this silicon fluorine bond is very strong then why it breaks to produce this silicon hydrogen bond which is not that much strong. The reason is please look at the other reactant sodium hydride this is also an unstable region and from that sodium fluoride it is actually an ionic compound very stable. So overall the reaction became possible. So that's why before concluding anything about any particular reaction please focus on the overall reaction not a particular molecule. Now second one is from silicon tetrachloride if this silicon tetrachloride is treated with lithium aluminium hydride it produces silane and lithium chloride and, see. So, and finally the last one is reaction of silica with hydrogen and aluminium metal it produces silicon. Now by the way student remember all of the process produces this SiH4 silane which is actually a gas molecule. So this gas molecule will come out from the reaction mixture and you, you can store it. So in this way you are purifying the reaction mixture very easily I am saying because silica is actually sand okay so this is actually a sand so this sand is mixed with many other impurities but for our reaction purpose not only chemistry but also for solar cell application high purity is essential and for that purpose this gaseous nature is very much helpful for further purification okay now let's come to this topic magnesium silicide so you can consider this is actually silicon 4 minus anion type you may consider that thing so that's why it's react with this is silicon and produce silicon. Now it can be produced by heating silicon dioxide found in sand with excess magnesium and remember student this magnesium is acting here as reducing agent because silicon in silica is plus 4 oxidation state so that is reduced by magnesium 0 and this magnesium is converted into plus 2 oxidation state and silicon is in 0 elemental silicon okay. And remember student this elemental zero of silicon has significant stability. Now the process first forms silicon metal and magnesium oxide and if excess uh, this silica is used then elemental silicon is formed okay. And overall if elemental silicon uh, is reacted with excess magnesium present in the medium then magnesium silicide is formed from the reaction of remaining magnesium with silicon. So this magnesium and silicon reacted with produces this Mg2Ci magnesium silicide. So this is a very important because in this case an alkaline earth metal is reducing sand into corresponding and useful chemical which can readily react with HCl and produce the volatile gas silicon. Now a simple surprising question may come in your mind that sir why so much silica is available in nature? This is because silicon and oxygen come from very strong covalent bond because silica is SiO2 okay and actually this is not double bond like we say CO2 means this molecule is oh oh it is not like that student this has four covalent bond with oxygen okay it's a solid structure polymeric structure now so this is actually the you can consider this is the sigma bond so this silicon and oxygen from very strong covalent bond sigma bond together Furthermore, these silicon and oxygen have partial double bond character. What do I mean? Because the oxygen has two lone pairs of electron, it is in p orbital, so it's filled, and silicon has, I repeat, energetically accessible vacant d orbital. So this is plus, this is minus. So silicon has energetically accessible vacant d orbital. So what happens? This oxygen can delocalize its lone pair of electron into the vacant d orbital of silicon, which is energetically accessible. 
Consequently, what happened? Further electron delocalization happens and the sigma bond or single bond, what we just told some time before, between this silicon and oxygen is actually not purely single bond. It's partially double bond character. Okay. So, that's why it's, it's a very stable molecule. It's a solid compound. It's found it everywhere. <clears throat> Let us discuss about its reaction with oxygen. What happens? Actually, we just some time before I told that silicon form bond with hydrogen and this bond is student not that much stable because silicon is third row element, hydrogen is first row, overlap is poor, second is the gas. Now, it reacts with oxygen in exothermic reaction ultimately produce a very stable molecule silica. Just you can see just some time before we told why nature has so much silica elsewhere, everywhere. So, it produces silica along with water, both are very stable molecule. So, huge amount of energy is released in this reaction and that is why silane is actually a pyrophoric gas means capable of auto ignition temperature below 54 degree and this pyrophoric material should be handled in laboratory very carefully because when they expose in oxygen they catches fire automatically. I repeat they catches fire automatically. So, proper inert condition is needed to handle such kind of molecules. Now, this is a very interesting question I guess all of us about the different hydride from silicon, carbon, boron and nitrogen. These four hydride now I shall discuss. So, as I told discussed some time before that this hydride from silicon hydride this is Actually, silane has hydride character delta negative because of electronegativity difference. Not only that, if you look at carbon, this carbon's electronegativity is 2.5 whereas hydrogen 2.2. So, carbon is more polar compared to hydrogen. So, we can expect that this carbon is delta negative whereas the hydrogen is delta positive because it is less electronegative compared to carbon. If you look at the boron scenario is somewhat similar. Electronegativity of boron is 2 whereas hydrogen is 2.2. So, hydrogen is delta minus. Okay. And if you look at the ammonia molecule, electronegativity of nitrogen near about 3, hydrogen less 2. So, nitrogen is delta negative, hydrogen is delta positive. So, from these you can see both silane and boron. So, these two both can act as reducing agent. I guess you have seen many reaction of boron as reducing agent and silane also does the same. And if you look at this methane versus ammonia, their polarity is different. But, but a question is that, e, what is the, is methane, because methane and silane are belong to group 4 hydride. So, they are same reactive, obviously no, methane is very less reactive compared to silane. Okay. And activation of these carbon hydrogen bonds selectively for methane is very, very difficult. And that's a very big problem. If we can solve this problem, we do not have energy crisis because we have a huge amount of methane deposit in the ocean bed as methane clathorates. So, it can supply a relatively greener energy in future, but proper, proper chemistry and technological improvement is essential. I have already discussed a dedicated lecture on methane clathorates. You may visit for better understanding. Now, so we have understood about this thing. Let's come to the use of silane that is high purity silicon solar cell. By the way student, because of global warming and climate change, we are forced to found alternate sources which produces energy more specifically electricity via non CO2 emission pathway or renewable sources and solar is one of the best choice for that. And this silicon solar cell is capable to convert the photonic energy of sunlight into electric electricity or electrical energy and for that purpose semiconductor like silicon needed but I repeat but in very high purity needed okay so very high pure silicon is needed like you can consider 99.59 and this is called actually 9n because before point there are 29 after point there are 79 so you can consider how much pure and very pure so, for photovoltaic or solar cell application, very pure silicon is needed. And one of the topic is like decomposition of this silane above 400 degrees centigrade. In this way, what it produces? Silicon and hydrogen. Just sometime before I told that the overlap between the hydrogen and silicon is not that much better. 
Consequently, what happens? This bond can be broken efficiently, which will ultimately result in hydrogen gas and silicon. Now, if you look at the overall reaction, in the first step, we have prepared, we have taken silica. So, from silicon, we have prepared silicon tetrafluoride. And right now, from silicon, tet sorry, tetrahydride, from tetrahydride, we are converting in silicon. So, from nature, we have taken dirty silicon and through chemicals transformation and this silane as silicon tetrahydride as intermediate, we are producing this elemental silicon with higher purity. But by the way, you can't, don't expect that this silicon is, could directly be used or it has this 9N purity, obviously not. But it is very much pure, but for solar cell application, further purification or multiple stage of refining is essential to achieve this 9N purity. Okay. So, that is why you can see the gaseous nature and purification is very much helpful such that we can produce this silicon efficiently and remember student how much cheaper way technology I means if we can extract silicon cheaper way relatively cheaper way then the cost of overall silicon solar cell will be less and if the cost is less many people can afford and very soon we shall be able to harness the benign sunlight for our electricity generation and we in this way indirectly the means release of this greenhouse gas like carbon dioxide will be reduced which is essential for our mother nature for our climate security now so in conclusion what you have learned today that silens are very important reagent for both organic and inorganic chemistry and today we have discussed mainly the inorganic part and in future we will discuss the organic chemistry part source of silen is widely available and inexpensive silica sand SiO2 the hydrogen atom of silen is negatively polarized and it behaves like an hydride so silica silicon hydride decomposes in higher temperature tetrahydride to produce elemental silicon with higher purity and this is applicable for photovoltaic application and actually this directly could not be used actually we need at this 9 n purity grade silicon for this photovoltaic application now let's come back to the mcq which one is the hardest compound mentioned below the answer is you can see the boron carbide Okay, why? Because in option check boron carbide 1, silicon carbide, diamond tungsten boride. So, this tungsten boride is below boron carbide. You can see here point number 1 second. Silicon carbide is not and diamond. Actually, you can see in the list diamond is in the top. Okay, so now a question may come that why not the diamond answer? Student read the question carefully hardest compound i have what is the hardest compound not element diamond is element actually this is pure carbon but boron carbide is a compound and how compounds are produced by chemical reaction among the elements okay so that's how you can say the answer is option a boron carbide but you need to be careful if any such kind of question comes because sometimes overconfidence result in mistake so this is the end of this discussion. I believe this video may be useful for you. Please write your opinion in the comment box. And if possible, please visit my other channel where I upload global warming and climate change related videos. So thanks for watching. See you in my